Do you suffer from endometriosis-related pain? Have you tried standard treatments without relief? Well, there's a new drug that just got approved in the U.S. specifically for endometriosis-related pain. I'll talk about the latest information today coming up. Hey everyone, Dr. Wesley Davis. I make weekly YouTube videos giving you the best possible evidence-based information to help you have the best possible outcome. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing. If you have endometriosis, maybe you've already tried surgery, maybe you've used birth control pills or other hormonal methods, maybe the pain got better for a while, but perhaps it has come back, or maybe it didn't respond to these things in the first place. All these medications have their roles and they do help some people, but not everyone. If you haven't responded to standard hormonal therapy, and maybe you've even already had surgery, good news is there's a new medication that just became approved in the U.S. for endometriosis pain. It's approved for moderate to severe pelvic pain, painful periods, or painful intercourse. The medicine's called Elagolix. The trade name is Oralissa. Oralissa is a GnRH receptor antagonist. It's similar chemically to Lupron. However, Depo-Lupron was an injection, and this is an oral medication. GnRH receptor antagonists shut down your own hormonal stimulation of the endometriosis, and that's supposed to help reduce the pain. The effectiveness of this medication was established using two trials of about 1,700 women who were studied for 6 to 24 months. Now they showed reduction in pain scores by about 50 to 75 percent by two to three months. We don't have long-term data yet to know how long the pain relief might last after you've stopped medication. Oralissa is dosed as either a 150 milligram tablet twice a day or a 200 milligram tablet daily. And the exact dose depends on the indication and how the patient responds to the medication. You can't take it if you're pregnant, trying to get pregnant, or if you have problems with bone loss or the liver disorders. Typically, the medication is taken for 6 to 24 months. There is concern with use longer than that. It may be associated with bone loss. It may also cause alterations in your menstrual cycle, which could make it hard to know if you were pregnant or not. There's also evidence that it could increase depression symptoms. It's important to know that Elagolix is not birth control in and of itself. You do need to continue using birth control. However, it, you should not use medicines that contain estrogen. So birth control pills of the standard variety, NuvaRing, the patch, things like that. The thought is that the estrogen in those products may make the Elagolix less effective. Condoms, progesterone only pills, IUDs, things like that are all fine as long as they're progesterone only or hormone free. The most common side effects were hot flashes and night sweats, moodiness, and nausea. All these were less than 5% and most of the time symptoms were less pronounced as time went on. It's important to know that the pain relief was not immediate. It took up to about two months to start to see an improvement in pain scores. Also important to know that you should take calcium and vitamin D throughout the entire time you're taking the medication to hopefully reduce the impact of bone loss. So of course the big question is what will it cost? Retail is about $850 a month. That's $10,000 a year. It's unclear yet how much or to what extent insurance will cover this medication. We also don't know if there, if there will be, I bet there will, pre-authorization process that's necessary before you can even fill the prescription. I'd recommend you talk to your doctor to learn more about the medication and also I'd recommend check with your insurance to see how it's going to be covered. So I think it's good to know there's a new option out there for folks who haven't responded to standard treatments or if their pain has returned and you're contemplating surgery, maybe this is an alternative. However, I don't think it's the best first choice, mostly because it's a new drug, we don't have good long-term data, and it sounds like it's going to be pretty expensive. But if you've been through everything else and you're looking for another option, this might be the one. I hope you found this information helpful. If you have questions, please feel free to put them in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great day.